Now, thanks for staying with us. The Lagos State Government, as part of its effort to gradually ease the lockdown in the state, announced that buses were no longer to carry passengers in their regular capacity. Now, public buses and bus hailing companies have had to ensure passengers wear face masks, provide hand sanitizers for them, disinfect their buses and bus parks regularly, and carry only 60% of their usual capacity. The transport companies have to contend with ensuring that passengers remain distant and safe whilst st um, staying profitable. The GM Lagos State Traffic Management Authority, Mr. Olajide Oduyoye, um, has joined us via Zoom to enlighten us and educate the public. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways to Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081. 8038463. Um okay, so Isi. Yes. When you saw the videos on Monday, hmm. what came to your mind? Hey, COVID-19. <laughs> These people are going to get infected because they're not observing social distancing. And uh, on top of that one, they don't have anything to probably to actually wash their hands. So that means that definitely somebody is going to be infected. That was Absolutely. the first thing. That was the first thing that came to my mind. Absolutely. And how unruly Nigerians can be because okay. they weren't observing the Nothing. the measures put in place Absolutely. to contain the virus. Okay, so I think we have Mr. Olajide Oduye. If he's here with me, good evening, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good evening. Thank you for uh, for joining us this evening. Um, so. Um, with the ease of the lockdown, when um, the easing started on Monday, how did LASMA prepare, first of all, prior to that ease? And what has been the experience since the ease of the lockdown in Lagos State? Well, I'm not sure the ease itself. It's, um, maybe we say ease from the government side. But I think even prior to that, a lot of people were actually acting and behaving as if there was no lockdown. Don't forget that days where days where markets were allowed to open from 10 to 2. And so people took the opportunity to just step out of the house when they didn't have to. And that's what I noticed. They, all the markets were full, both sellers and buyers not wearing any face masks. So by the time we're talking about the ease of lockdown, perhaps the difference in, in, in retrospect is just more people being able to go to work. And so there was increased traffic. But um, if you ask people like us who have been on the road from the beginning up till now, you would see that really it is just more vehicular movement but the number of uh, pedestrian movements is just been kind of static, high. And so there is no, there's no seriousness on the side of the people for whatever good, bad or ugly excuse that we may have, but we are not respected. We are not scared. Mm -hmm. We are not worried. Uh, we're just doing things like we have some superior power to overcome. Meanwhile, we can see the death toll every single day. We're being updated. We know exactly what has happened in other countries where people did not obey the lockdown. And so Monday for last month officers, it's just been like a normal day. Albeit the fact that you now have to put extra work in checkmating the, the, um, the behavior of public bus operators. I think a lot of them did not understand the percentage measurements. And um, that may have been the fault from somewhere. Um, what we mostly understand is basic numbers and that kind of sticks in. So by the time the government was announcing 60%, 60%, 60%, 60% their own calculation of 60% was just to remove one person from each row of a bus. Wow. But everyone seems to have forgotten that the whole purpose of reduction a number of passengers in a bus is to be able to achieve physical distance between passengers. In fact, by the time they're saying, oh, they said it's three passengers to a row, the conductor doesn't count himself 
as a person who needs to sit inside a bus. And that's what we've been battling with since, since Monday. By um, Thursday, I think because of the um, number of arrests and education and disturbance of those that were violating, and um, the Ministry of Transport went back on here and went back to the press to just explain things and break it down. Then we started having um, improved adherence to the maximum two per row. Mm -hmm. But um, it's been a big battle for last more officers in the sense that there's a battle between trying to get people to go to sort of like maintain the maximum numbers allowed in the vehicle and not obstructing or disrupting traffic flow since the government says people can go to work. And a lot of people use that as an excuse because when they leave work at three o'clock, maybe they're coming from Aja or Victoria Land, they're going all the way to Abado in Ogun State. So they get caught up in the eight o'clock curfew, citing traffic issues. So those are the sort of things that last month has to deal with in, in terms of like the ease of the lockdown from Monday. Okay. Okay. I, um, nice talking to you again, sir. Um, the feedback, I was going to ask you about the feedback from your staff, but you've already given us um, the answer to that. So what are the strategies in place by LASMA to ease movement or ease um, uh, movement for commuters amidst COVID-19? Well, I don't, I don't feel that our job or the expectations from LASMA is different from the norm. Our primary purpose is to ensure traffic movement, traffic flow, and to manage incidences. So when you have accidents, when you have breakdowns, our job is to manage it and get it off the road so that it doesn't create a lot of chaos. So that has not changed. So the issue of COVID doesn't change anything because people are still moving in their vehicles anyway. The difference in additional alertness is just the number of people. Um, you must also realize that it's always been difficult for us as an agency, traffic management agency, to deal with Okada menace. Now, from Monday, Okadas are not supposed to operate anywhere in Lagos State. But you would notice that it's not happening. They are riding, they have passengers, they have operators, they are all over the place riding against traffic, but that is a serious challenge for last month. So we normally would leave that to tax force because they have the personnel in terms of like uh, weapons and stuff like that, at least to scare the Okada operators. Okay. But if a last month officer or last month officers should try to apprehend a motorcyclist, there will probably be a bigger problem than what was being done. So that is a challenge. Okay, so Mr. Um, I've, said, I've said on other programs that I've attended that the Kekemawa operators, in my observation and from what I've noticed from Monday, seems to be the ones that have um, tried their best to flow with the directives of the governor. Okay, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Olajide, can you help me understand this? Um, so I was on my way home yesterday and I noticed police checkpoints, you know, causing a lot of traffic at police checkpoints. Now, how is LASMA working hand in hand with the police authority? Because I feel that some of these checkpoints are the ones delaying the movement, causing the backlog of traffic. traffic. And if we cannot work hand in hand with the police authority, you know, for instance, I'm press, right? All I need to do is flash my ID and I'm let allowed to go through but no they would ask questions and the government governor has said it several times that you don't need to ask questions once you cite their ideas that they are essential workers you let them through but this is not happening and it's, it is actually causing a lot of traffic and i feel it's counterproductive to whatever work that last month will do to try to ease movement so how are you working hand in hand with the police may i ask what sort of time you're talking about right now Okay, so when I was going home, um, yesterday after the show is about 9 p.m. So when I was going home, normally it would take me 15 minutes to get home. But I took an hour to get home yesterday night. 
Okay, so obviously the curfew kicks in at 8 p.m., right? Yes. So yes. anyone on the road seems to be breaking the curfew, except for those that have authorization to go through essential service providers like yourself. Absolutely. Now, this is the challenge, and I know exactly what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So I've got to find a way to frame my answer without, uh, without being too blatant. Now, the experience is, even before the ease of the lockdown, you might have noticed that a lot of people had stickers, they had the COVID stickers, they have all sorts of different IDs. Mm -hmm. But I can almost tell you there are plenty of fake IDs out there. There are people using other people's ID cards. There are people making photocopies of permits. There are permits flying around with no link of name of the company or the person. It's just a photocopy of just like to whom it may concern. It doesn't take a genius to work out that a lot of Nigerians were taking advantage of the of the opportunity given to essential workers to just be driving around. And from that experience, the police were being accused of allowing too much traffic on the road with non-essential road users. And so they had to step up. And in whatever situation, anytime you stop traffic in this Lagos, when everything is kind of free, and you stop traffic for even one minute, no doubt you would have traffic queues because the time it takes for you to stop a vehicle that is in motion, the time it takes for you to ask for their identification, the time it takes the person to bring it out of, out of their bag, that is assuming they don't even begin to question you like, listen, just let me go kind of thing. All these seconds mount and it will cause traffic. Now that does not mean, that does not mean that the authorized officers on the road, that some of them are not deliberately creating the havoc so that it gives them the opportunity to be saying things or be cajoling or whatever. I don't, I'm trying to watch okay, my words. I think I can help you there because I, I saw some, some exploitation no, going on yesterday night. Because they will say you, they will say I'm, <laughs> I don't know what you tell me. So all I'm saying is the human factor and the environment that we live in, and the type of um, people that we can be when an opportunity presents itself, yes, would, in my opinion, have created such traffic gridlock where it doesn't have to. And then a lot of our officers on the road, they're not too conversant in managing traffic flow, even when you're checking. I'll give an example. If you're on a road like, um, um, a Papa Oshu, the expressway. Mm. There are three lanes, fast moving. Now, I want to wonder why would 10 officers, 15 officers, stay in one particular spot, constrict the movement to one lane from three, and you don't think there's going to be traffic more. What should normally have happened is that officers should have spread themselves over a 50-meter distance. And then you have a communication link between the first officer who can trigger up that there's a vehicle on the third lane, on the second lane, that is carrying more passengers that shouldn't. And so the next officer within about 25 meters will be the one to stop that one, put him onto the lane. By, and by so doing, you don't obstruct all the three lanes and you let it okay. flow. There will be five seconds delay, but that will be it. But what we find is that officers go on the road, they put a barricade on the road, turn three lanes into one, and then the person that they're talking to is there arguing with them, Okay, I'm essential, I have ID card, I can see properly, it's not your face, it's my face. Why are you carrying this? It's my sister, my brother, my son, my daughter. And it becomes two minutes. Then you get honking up on. Then you get people turning three lanes into four. That is the kind of problem that I have envisaged, I have seen. Wow. I think we'd have to <laughs> leave it there for now. But thank you so much because um, we would have to beg you because we cannot end this traffic issue We'll have to beg you that we have to bring you back um, because yep. we need to find a permanent solution to ease the traffic and we would need to know what our roles are as citizens and what the roles of the uh, officials should be you know and all this harassment has to stop so thank you so yeah. much mr olajide Odudoye, for joining us this evening all right we'll take a short thank break for latinumbu and oludayo 
Olujekun will join us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 